62 degree head tube angles and 180 millimeter forks probably conjure images of long travel enduro bikes, and rightly so. No one in their right mind would make, let alone buy, a hardtail with geometry anything like that. Right? Wrong. And it's not just one crazy nut job trying to pedal his ultra enduro hardtail that he built in his garage. Today we're actually going to be looking at five different hardtails, all with head tubes slacker than 60 degrees, running forks with more than 150 millimeters of travel. And I don't want to spoil the fun too much, but there's a hardtail on this list with a head tube angle of less than 60 degrees. <laughs> Talk about hardcore. And in the famous words of Dewey Finn, let's start living hardcore and look at the criteria I use when choosing the five bikes on this list. The worn out cliche, long, low, and slack pretty much sum up what I was looking for when picking these bikes out. I wanted to find the bikes with the slackest head tube angles, longest reaches, and lowest bottom brackets that money can buy. In addition to geometry, I was also looking for frames that could safely handle the longest travel fork. As we'll see here in a little bit, there are some frames on this list that are spec to go up to 180 millimeters. And really, every bike on this list is super aggressive and super hard hitting, and it felt a little silly at times to try to pick out which of these bikes was more hardcore than the other. So let's just go ahead and dive straight in with the least aggressive bike on it, which is the Cro-Mag Dr. Hawk. The Cro-Mag Dr. Hawk has, for as long as I can remember, been kind of the pinnacle for the most aggressive or hardcore that you can make a hardtail. So it seems pretty crazy to me that I'm starting this list off with placing that in the least aggressive of the five bikes that we're gonna talk about today. Like everything that Cro-Mag makes, the Dr. Hawk is absolutely beautiful. As you'd guess, it's a steel frame and it has a 62 and a half degree head tube angle when running its 170 millimeter fork with 29 inch wheels. It's got a seat tube angle of 76 and a half degrees and a seat tube height of 445 millimeters. The chainstay length and bottom bracket drop are right about in the middle of the pack, at least when it comes to these five bikes at 435 millimeters and 48 millimeters respectively. But what's not really in the middle is the reach. This bike is long. The size large has a reach of 495 millimeters. All of that steel goodness, in addition to the good name and warranty that comes with Cro-Mag, is gonna set you back though. This frame, again, just the frame, is gonna cost you $1,796. If you wanna learn more about the Dr. Hawk, or really just hardcore hardtails in general, and the reason why some people think they should have such slack head tubes, there's a really cool article written by the designer of this frame, Clark Lewis, who's actually an emergency room physician, where he talks about his kind of ideology when it comes to mountain bike and specifically hardtail geometry. And I'll go ahead and link that down in the bio so you can check that out and get a little light reading in on your next lunch break. The rest of us now are going to move on to bike number four on the list. It's the On One Hello Dave. The On One Hello Dave or the On One Wrecker, which is its titanium counterpart, is a pretty ridiculous bike. Not only does it have a 62 degree head tube angle with a 150 millimeter fork, it's also got some super long 458 millimeter chainstays and a 480 millimeter reach in the size large. That makes it the longest bike on my list by a good margin. But just in case that's not hardcore enough for you, On One says that you can actually run this thing with up to 180 millimeters of travel, which is gonna make that bike that much longer and slacker. The Hello Dave is spec to run on 29 inch wheels and has a 50 millimeter bottom bracket drop. The seat tube height on this guy is 430 millimeters and it has a quite steep seat tube angle of 77 degrees. All in all, the combination of that super slack 62 degree head tube angle and the insanely long 458 millimeter chainstays should make this one of the most stable and planted bikes on the list. It's also the second cheapest bike on this list with the frame costing just $1,084. But to be honest, the best buy if you're looking to get a Hello Dave is to buy a complete bike from Planet X. I've talked about those complete bikes on some other videos on this channel, but they are an insane bargain. So again, you wanna get a Hello Dave, buy the complete bike. Coming in at number three is actually a brand new bike for me. It's the Ferrum NVHT. And shout out to Tyler Raffle on YouTube for telling me about this bike. It definitely fits the category of ultra hardcore hardtails. The Ferrum NVHT is spec with the longest travel of any bike on this list coming in at 180 millimeters, which will set that head tube to 62 and a half degrees. 
Do you want to slacken that thing out even more? No worries. Ferrum has the geometry listed on our website for if you were to mullet that frame, which would put that head tube all the way down at 61.7 degrees. Absolutely ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, the reach on this thing. It's got a 510 millimeter reach on that size large, paired with some really short chain stays that are just 420 millimeters long. Now, some people will tell you that's gonna make a very unbalanced feeling bike, but what I can say is that that long reach up front will make it feel nice and roomy to move around, but the short chain stays in the back should still make it feel super poppy and playful as long as you can get around that 62 degree head tube angle. Speaking of playful, this bike's also got the highest bottom bracket on our list with a bottom bracket drop of just 41 millimeters as well as a seat tube height of 420 millimeters and a seat tube angle of 75 degrees. The frame is steel and made by a small company based out of Nevada, and I think it's pretty cool that despite the fact that this is coming from such a small brand, it's actually the cheapest bike on this list with the frame costing just $899. The Ferrum NVHT is undoubtedly ultra aggressive, but I've got to hand it to him for still keeping those chain stays relatively short and having a relatively high bottom bracket. Yes, that will take away some of the stability, but with a 180 millimeter fork and that super slack 62 and a half degree head tube angle, I think it's cool that they still made sure that this bike is gonna be fun and poppy if you wanna ride it on some more kind of flow trails and not just charge it straight down the mountain. Coming in at number two is an iconic hardcore hardtail. You can always recognize it by that cross beam in that front triangle. And it is of course the BTR Belter. The Belter is a bit of an anomaly on this list because I don't think the frame geometry has really been revised much over the last five or so years. So it still has a pretty short reach of just 450 millimeters on a size large. Numbers like that would be considered on the small size of a medium frame today. So you might argue that that's a bit outdated, but what's definitely not outdated is the ridiculously slack 61 and a half degree head tube angle. That's right guys, this is the first bike on our list to be slacker than 62 degrees. We are in full on downhill bike territory now. The Belter is spec to run a 160 millimeter fork and rolls on 27.5 inch wheels. I talked a second ago about the relatively short reach. Well, the same applies to the back end of the bike. It's actually got 415 millimeter chain stays, which is the shortest of any bike on our top five list today. And that should again, make this bike feel super playful. On the flip side of that though, it does have the lowest bottom bracket on our list with a bottom bracket drop of 60 millimeters. I found this to be kind of surprising because it's also the only hardtail on our list to be exclusively 27.5 inch wheeled in the back. So that smaller wheel with the super low bottom bracket drop makes me think that you would maybe deal with some pedal strikes on this thing. But let's be real, if you're riding around a bike with a 61 and a half degree head tube angle, you're probably not planning on doing a ton of pedaling you're just going straight down hills. That said though, the 75 degree seat tube angle should put you at a decent climbing position should you choose to winch it up your local fire road. And the 400 millimeter seat tube should be plenty low enough for all your speed tucks on the way back down. So if you like the sound of a smaller, more compact frame, but still that super slack front end, then the BTR Belter is definitely the bike for you, but you are gonna have to pay for it. That steel frame is gonna set you back a whopping 2,468 US dollars. Don't get me wrong, I'm all about high quality products, but <laughs> I've never owned a complete bike that costed that much, so it's kind of crazy to think about buying a frame for that much. And if that $2,500 price tag left a bit of a bad taste in your mouth, then I wanna pause real quick before we talk about the number one bike on our list and do a little honorable mention. And that's gonna go to a bike that I'm pretty sure all of you have probably heard of and some of you probably own. It's the Kona Hanzo ESD. This bike was just barely edged out of the top five list for this video, but it does have just about as aggressive as a geometry, but at a much lower cost of just $699 for the frame. That's $200 cheaper than the next least expensive bike on this list and almost a quarter the price of the Belter we just talked about. But don't worry, you're still gonna get a 150 millimeter Z1 fork with a 63 degree head tube angle, a super low 62 and a half millimeter bottom bracket, and if you like those shorter chain stays, Kona's got you covered. This thing has 417 millimeter chain stays. 
So shout out to Kona for making an aggressive hardtail that the rest of us can afford. There are other affordable bikes with similar geometry like this on the market. Things like the RSD RS291 or the Marin El Jefe, but the Kona Hanzo ESD has all those bikes beat on price. But we're not here to talk about the most value oriented bikes. We're here to talk about the most hardcore bikes. So let's get back into this list to our number one most aggressive bike. It is the Shand Ioma. What? You say you haven't heard of the Shand Ioma? Well, I hadn't either before I started doing some research for the video, but this bike is absolutely insane. Now, brief caveat, I actually haven't been able to see too much on Shand's website about how to buy this bike right now, but I have seen some reviews and press releases on Pink Bike and Bike Rumor and Vital MTB about this bike back in September of 2022, saying that they're working on getting these bikes up and ready to go. So hopefully we'll see those coming this spring or summer. Now let's get into the good stuff. The Shand Ioma has a 60 degree head tube angle. I, I didn't misspeak there. It's a 60 degree head tube angle. And what's even crazier is they actually spec this bike with a two degree angle adjust headset. So you could adjust this frame everywhere from 58 degrees, which is stupid, to 62 degrees, which is still stupid, but I guess it's smarter than 58 degrees. It's also gonna come spec with an eccentric bottom bracket so you can change the bottom bracket height and change the length, all super cool stuff that makes this frame really versatile. That 60 degree head tube angle that we mentioned is mated with a 150 millimeter fork, but Shan says that you could run 160 or even up to 170 millimeter fork if you really wanted to. The reach on this frame is on the smaller end at 466 millimeters. The seat tube is about average at 445 millimeters and the seat tube angle when set at that 60 degree head tube is 76 degrees. Finally, moving to the rear end of the bike with the eccentric bottom bracket in its kind of middle setting, the chain stays are 440 millimeters long. And while those chain stays might not be quite as long as that on one Hello Dave, they're still plenty long enough that should make this bike feel really planted and stable at high speeds. This super versatile, super aggressive steel frame is gonna set you back $1,474. And like I mentioned earlier, I don't believe it's on the market just yet, but they did release some press releases back in September of 2022. So it should be here soon. So keep your eyes out on the Shand website for your chance to get your hands on what is undoubtedly the most aggressive hardtail frame that you can buy in 2023. So there you have it. Five ridiculously aggressive bikes that should have you kicking your mates butts when you're racing their full suspension rigs down the mountain. I've had a lot of fun doing top five videos like this as of late. So if you've got a topic that you'd like me to do a video on, put that down there in the comments and I'd love to make it happen. I'm also curious if any of you guys have experience on any of these frames. With the exception of the Dr. Hawk and the Hello Dave, a lot of these frames are really rare. So it'd be cool to hear from some of you if you've actually spent some pedal time on these bikes. While you're down there in the comments, if you would please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to see more hardcore hardtail content, that would be awesome. And then when you're done with that, you know what to do. Grab your bike, <laughs> regardless of your head tube angle or how much travel you've got on it, go out for a ride and hopefully I'll see you out there.